Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. This is the second video of making a tycoon in Roblox, and in this video, we create a player module that can create and edit leader stats in our player. If you guys haven't seen the last video of this series, make sure to check it out. It's where we create a nice little setup for our whole tycoon. But this video, we're working on our leader stats, so let's get right into it. So let's get right into it. Let's go into server storage, then to the modules folder, click the little plus arrow, and let's make a module script. And this module script, I'm going to name player module. And just to make it easier, I'm just going to name the variable or the table variable player module and this return to player module. And if you know what a module script is, I have a video about that. I will put a card to it right now. So before we actually get into writing the functions for our player, player module, we first got to define the player service. So local player service equals game get service players. So there we go. Now we have our player services that allow us to access like player added events and player removing events because it's something very key to making a player module script. So the first function we're going to make in our player module is player module function player module dot on player added. And it's going to take in one parameter, which is the player that joins or is added to the game. So this function is going to be responsible for doing all of our all of the stuff that we need to do once the player joins. And in order to actually link that to when the player joins, at the very bottom of my module, I'm going to type player service dot player added connect player module player module dot on player added make sure that there's no extra parentheses in this bottom line make sure you do not have a colon in the player module function unlike either one of them because otherwise it will not work so whenever a player joins this should run but obviously this will never run because we actually have not required our player module yet we will do that in another script a little bit later so Right now, this function really does nothing. What we need to do is we need it to create our leader stats and create specific things within our leader stats. So we're going to define another function, and we're going to call this player module dot create leader stats. And it's going to take in the player that we want to create the leader stats for. So what this is going to do is going to create a leader stats folder. It's going to be instance.new folder. And by the way, leader stats is basically the kind of like bar thing that you see in the top right that has like your money or your coins or whatever. And it's usually in most Roblox games, so that's what we'll do. And the way you tell Roblox to give you leader stats is by putting a folder in the player named leader stats. And so we're actually going to do that right now. We're going to set the leader stats dot name to leader stats. Capitalization and spelling do matter. So it's leader stats, no spaces, no caps. And then whatever we put into the leader stats folder, like an int value or a number value, it will display it on our leaderboard, which will be in the right side when we load into Roblox. So we also need a parent, this leader stats, so leader stats parent equals the player. So there we go. And we're also going to return the leader stats just as a good practice. We're actually really not going to use it for right now, but, you know, it's always good to have. So then in our on player added function up at the top, we're going to define leader stats, local leader stats, equals player module dot create leader stats. I'm going to send it to the player. So what will happen is whenever this function runs after a player joins, it will trigger this event, and this event will give back the leader stats folder that it, it created and put in the player and named it properly. So there we go. But now we actually need to put something in the leader stats. And it's always good when you're putting stuff into leader stats to make a function that can do it for you. So this function is going to be the name player module dot create leader stat. And it's just leader stat. This name might be a little bit confusing. You can change it if you want. 
that makes sense to me because you have a leader stats folder that contains leader stats and I want to create a single leader stat so I will name it this and it will take in a few parameters the player the value type the name of the leader stat and the default value and the reason we have a function for this even though in my tutorial I'm only going to use one leader stat and it's going to be named money whenever you make a game you always want to be expandable as expandable as you can so if I ever want to add a total time played leader stat for example it'll be simple I'll just create another leader stat whenever we need to and so let's actually get to programming this leader stat so we're first going to define the value that we want to create and Personally, I've only used end values for my leader stats. You probably can use other values, but I would stick to only number values. Hey, you could be able to use strings. I don't really know, but I've never found a use for it. So, but well, we're going to make an instance.new for the value type that we send in. And we will define this a little bit later in the on player added function. But now that, now that we've created our value, we need to set the name of the value to the name that we give it and then we can set the value dot value equal to the value so remember this will be an int value or a number value and in order to change like the actual int or number in it you have to access the dot value property we can set that to the value and then we need to set the value dot parent to the player dot leader stats and then we also need to return the value and so what we can do up here in our on player added event is define local money, which will be player module. And you can change money to whatever you whatever you want. I'm just doing that since it's the simplest type of leader stat you can make. And by that I mean it's just a simple name. Like you can do coins or bucks or dollars or whatever you want. And so we're gonna do player module dot create later stat send in the player the value type I want is int value and integers are just numbers that do not have any decimal places they can be negative they can be positive but they're super useful super simple and so for the name we're gonna name this money and for the value let's just set it to zero by default later in this tutorial series I might uh, make it so you can save your money or whatever but for right now, we're just going to leave it as simple as possible and not do that. So now that we have this player module created, if we were to run this, nothing would happen because nothing's really requiring it. Nothing's accessing it. So we're going to make a script and serve a script service. But before we do that, let's first add a reference to our player module. So in the references folder in replicated storage, I'm going to duplicate the template object value with control D. I'm going to name it name the duplicate player module I'm going to click the value slot and then click the player module slot and then boom there we go we've accessed the player module with our references so now in service script service I'm going to create a script and this script is going to be ma named main so it's going to be our main script of everything that we do first thing we're going to do is define replicated storage storage which is equal to game get service replicated storage there we go and then we're getting replicated storage so you can get references so local references equals replicated storage wait for child references and we want to get the player module so local player module equals require we have to require it since it is a module script and we're going to require references dot player module dot value to get the value of the object value so this should allow the player module to run so let's test it out and look at that there we go we have money right next to my name and it has a value of zero and you can actually see this in your players so if I go to the game explorer go to players sir a lot which is my name and then you have the leader sets folder that we created and a money value that's set to zero so there you go and by the way sometimes when you're testing this in the studio it doesn't show your like money or whatever and this is only studio exclusive like in 
an actual server and, and your actual game, it will, I think, almost 100% of the time load the leader stats. Because in a lot of my games, that happens where it doesn't quite load. And that's what ha actually happened when I first tested this out. But no fear, it will work in your game. So there's only one other, actually two other functions that we need to create in our tycoon. And these are just going to be for later use. We're actually not going to use them. And the reason we're going to make these is just so everything's uniform throughout our whole game. And these are going to be ways to change your money. Because you don't want to let any script change the money directly. Because, for example, if you want to add a coin or a money multiplier game pass, you, oh, whoops, you don't want to have to go to each time you change the money and just like fix it manually. So this function is going to be player module dot add money and player and the amount of money that you want to add. And this this will be a very simple function. It'll just say local money is player dot leader stats dot money money if I can spell it correctly and then money dot value equals money dot value plus the amount that we want to add and this is only for adding money if we want to like subtract money which is this only really happens when you're trying to make like a purchase in your game we're going to name this function money purchase and we're going to take the player and the price of the item that you want to purchase. So this is actually going to be a little bit more intelligent than the last function. We're going to define the money once again. Local money equal player, player stats money, And we're going to find a success boolean. Local success equals false. And we're going to see if the money dot value is greater than or equal to our price. Then... We want to subtract, do money dot value equals money dot value minus price. So we want to subtract the price from the thing and then set success equal to true. And then in the end, we want to return success. So this will be useful later down the road when we're trying to purchase like a, like a new wall or a new dropper for our tycoon. And we don't really want to check if the like if we can purchase it. We just run this function. It'll tell us if success is true or false, and we can check that in our game logic. So let's go into the main script and let's actually test the player module dot add money function and let's send in game dot players dot a lot and then let's add ten money and. Obviously, there's no Sir Rage a lot in the game yet, but this will run at runtime, so it should be fine. So we're going to wait a second. Let's just see if this works. So we run in. Yeah, you can see right now. Um, oh, there we go. It loaded in. So you can see my money is now 10. It ha usually has a default of 0, and you can see this reflected in this money variable right here. So that works really good. So there you go. This is a very simple way to create leader stats and manage them in your game it's very robust very reliable i use it for all my games if you want to see a little bit more detailed like explanation of this process along with data saving i have a tutorial about that i may or may not do this later in the tycoon it just depends but for right now this little player simple player module script should suffice so i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe Stay tuned for the next Tycoon video, and I hope you guys have a nice day, and goodbye.